One of the hidden gems of Southern Indiana is the Sidney and Lois Eskenazi Museum of Art located on Indiana University's campus in Bloomington, Indiana. Eskenazi has a long, rich history, starting in 1941 when former president of IU, Herman B. Wells, and Henry Radford Hope, the head of IU's art department, began to collect pieces of artwork from different cultures and periods in history with the goal in mind to present this artwork to the university students and members of the public. As the number of works collected grew in size, it became clear to the university that there needed to be a building dedicated to the art museum. The Eskenazi Museum that we know today opened its doors in 1982 and was designed by acclaimed architect I.M. Fay, who helped design other iconic 20th century museum designs, including the East Building of the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., and the Glass Pyramid entrance to the Louvre in Paris, France. We can see the beautiful glass atrium ceiling that closely reflect, reflects the Louvre in this image. The Eskenazi Museum of Art has acquired over 45,000 pieces of art since its founding and is now considered one of the largest art holdings of any American university art museum. Unlike typical art museums, entry into Eskenazi is free to the public and has become a pillar to the local community with four learning centers within the building Eskenazi has seen over 160,000 K through 12 students from Southern Indiana visit, making it one of the premier teaching museums in the United States. Eskenazi Museum of Art has three stories filled with unique and breathtaking art. Although there is no set way to approach the museum, one of my favorite ways is to begin on the third floor, which is handicap accessible. The museum is designed from top to bottom, oldest to newest art. And on the third floor, we begin with the ancient art of Africa, Oceania, and indigenous art of the Americas exhibit, which features everything from pottery, jewelry, sculptures, wood carvings, paintings, and woven arts such as tapestries. Also featured on the third floor is the Magic Ledger exhibit, which features the drawings of Saul Steinberg, a modernist artist from the 20th century who is best known for his more than 1,200 internal drawings for the New York Magazine. As we travel down to the second floor, we are met with the Asian and Islamic art and ancient art exhibit. This exhibit has a vast array of sculptures, pottery, paintings, woodwork, jewelry, and even features a sarcophagus. Onto the first floor, we see the European and American art exhibit, which features art from the medieval period to 1900. Most of this exhibit is paintings, specifically beautiful paintings from the Renaissance and Baroque periods. This exhibit even features a painting from Claude Monet in the Impressionistic section. Finally, we move on to the modern and contemporary exhibition of European and American art. In this exhibit, we see lots of bright, bold colors and shapes as we explore expressionist style, cubism, and abstract art. In the middle of this exhibit, we are met with one of the most unique and conversation-starting sections of the museum. On display, we see a urinal, a bicycle wheel, a coat rack, a bottle dryer, a typewriter cover, and a snow shovel hanging from the ceiling. This exhibit features the work of Marcel Duchamp, a pioneering French-American artist whose work greatly influenced 20th century art. Duchamp refers to these pieces as ready-mades, as all of these items were mass-produced and able to be bought in common sto stores during the 1920s. His most controversial and eye-catching piece is known as Fountain, which features a factory-made urinal with the pseudonym R. Mutt, painted in black ink on the side. Duchamp attempted to submit this piece to the Society of Independent Artists, a New York organization he helped found in 1917. When it was rejected, Duchamp wrote an impassioned defense of the artist's right to choose, rather than make, objects and to give them aesthetic meanings through placement and context. By affixing a spinning bicycle wheel to a kitchen stool, he also pioneered the concept of kinetic or movable sculpture. Duchamp also displays a sense of humor in many of his pieces. In this piece entitled Trap, it features a coat rack nailed to the floor, imposing a tripping hazard to anyone walking in its vicinity. Another piece titled In Advance of the Broken Arm features a shovel hanging from the ceiling. Through these pieces, Duchamp challenged traditional norms of art and authorship. 
Duchamp was associated with Dadaism and Surrealism, and his concepts of ready-mades and the anti-art movement had a profound impact on modern art, paving the way for conceptual art and challenging conventional artistic practices. The Eskenazi Museum of Art is one of only three museums worldwide and the only one in the United States that features all of the objects comprising Duchamp's 1964 collection. One of the beautiful things with Duchamp's work is that he finds wonder in art within ordinary things. I think this is a beautiful feature of the museum that is often overlooked by visitors. After stopping by all of the floors, seeing art from the vast history of humankind, standing in front of Duchamp's exhibit puts everything into perspective. And I mean everything in the literal sense. If we open our minds, everything is art. Art is the leaves falling to the ground. Art is a latte made just right. Art is the smile of a loved one. Art is a fresh piece of printer paper open to anything. Art is a bottle of shampoo. Art is your favorite blanket. And art can even be a urinal. To appreciate the beauty in everything the world gives us is art. Art is a reflection of humanity. And humanity is the universe experiencing itself over and over again. Imagine how intriguing a coat rack or a bicycle wheel might be to someone who has never experienced it before. That is the beauty and wonder and magnificence of Duchamp's simple exhibit.